Happy Wednesday, midweek check-in. I got to check in with y'all because how y'all doing? <laughs> Been quite a start to the week. Um, I think we're still waiting on results, huh? Well, the only result that I really want to wait on, the only result that truly matters is God's result on his purpose over our lives and the result that he will have over our hearts and our minds as we continue to press into him. That's all I'm really asking for this week, uh, and specifically this evening, as I am myself as, as well, trying to prepare for whatever it is that the Lord is allowing to happen. Because anything that happens, God is in control, correct? Do we all know that, feel that, that God is in control? So if God is for us, who can be against us? So it doesn't matter who sits on what seat and what throne, but all that matters is that God is for us. And so I definitely want to go right into this. And I am just receiving Nick's prayers and thankful for the covering that is this house and giving honor to our leaders, Apostle Kim and Prophet Nick. And I'm just going to get right into it because I know Minister Q held it down and covered us in prayer. Amen. Um, but on Sunday, we kicked off Kingdom Strategy, this incredible sermon series that is part of this month. And November is a special month for me. <laughs> uh, it's the month that I was born. And so there is a plan that God had for us before he even put us in our mother's womb. And his plan is to prosper us not to harm us, right? So if the Lord's plan is to prosper us and not to harm us, then even God had a strategy for birthing us and bringing us into this world. He had a strategy in understanding exactly who he would birth you through. He had a strategy around <laughs> where he would birth you, specific geographic location, I mean, he just, God is in the details, right? He, he knew every intricate detail and had a strategy to the who, what, when, where, and why you came to be born. So this is pretty special for me that November is kingdom strategy and November is my birth month. And there's just so much that God is birthing in this time and in this hour, and not just through me and being a pastor, my first sermon as a pastor, but just what he's birthing through all of us because we are nothing without our community. We are nothing without the people that we have been met, like we're meant to be connected to, right? There's even a strategy in that. There's a strategy in why you're connected to this house specifically. God had a strategy when he brought you to Firehouse Community Church, right? He had a strategy when he connected you to Pastor Kim and Pastor Nick. He had a strategy when he connected you to the specific people in this community that you are with on a consistent basis, the people that you glean on and ask for prayer, right? And so I wanna ask you, because we're a community and this is Bible study. So I need y'all to talk to me tonight. What did you receive or what nuggets did you learn from Kingdom Strategy on Sunday? From what it means to be in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of heaven. Even if I just get one of you to put it in the chat or come off mic and tell me what is one thing that you remember from Sunday? What's one thing that stayed with you? What key did you get from what it means to be in the kingdom of heaven and to have kingdom strategy? Don't leave me hanging today. Don't leave me hanging tonight. This is participation. I need y'all to talk to me and let me know that y'all were paying attention on Sunday because I was paying attention. So I need y'all to pay attention. And then we got this good ambiance so you can really get into this Wednesday night Bible study. <laughs> Shout outs to my brother Q, kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are the same thing. Mm, amen. And we got the keys, keys. Yes, Josh, we do have the keys. So my takeaways were that the kingdom is powerful. And that the kingdom has purpose. So tying into what Minister Quinton is saying, that 
the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are the same. So your power and your purpose are together. They're one and the same. See, you can't have purpose without power. And there is power in your purpose, right? Amen. So those are some keys for you to have. Take those with you. Shout out to Shade saying the dominion of God is in power and not just in word. Yes. Amen. That was so good. So good. And it's so good for us to take notes so we can meditate on it throughout the week. That's part of the strategy. Part of kingdom strategy is to have things that you can go back to. And so even as we prepare the word, we prepare our notes and we have a strategy, but once we're in the battle, there are some things that you can't quite prepare for. And so this evening, I really want to talk about getting ready for the battle. That's part of strategy, right? Because when you think about any war, when people are going to go into war, when they're going to go into battle, they have a strategy, they come together, they have a plan. And even if the battle isn't something necessarily like just like a physical war, like going into another territory and trying to take over the land, there's wars against brands, you know? We know that Nike and Adidas are in competition. We know that McDonald's and Burger King are in competition. So sometimes they have a little competitive war and there is marketing strategies and there's planning around these corporations on how they can market and get to their goal audience to beat out the competition. And in other words, the competitor is the enemy, is it not? So we are at a war because there is something that is competing for your power. There is something that is competing for your purpose. Do you know that? Are you aware that before your mother's womb, that strategy that God had to create you, he had a strategy in power and purpose for your life. And there is something, there is a competitor that doesn't like it. There is a competitor that is standing wherever they are. And they're saying, mm, they got too much power. They got too much purpose. They got more power than me. They got more purpose than me. So I got to figure out and I got to create strategies over on this end to figure out how to beat out that competition. So there's, there's a war. There's a battle happening for your power and your purpose. And so although the battles that we see on earth, right, when we see a battle like in history, when there have been battles against land or the civil war was a physical battle that was gory and bloody, or there's a battle like we've seen iPhone versus Android. I mean, think about it. We got friends and when we see the green bubble, we're like, sis, really? You're texting me with the green bubble? So there's just, there is this thing going on in the physical realm. But there are all these things that we don't see that are happening in the spiritual realm. And that is the battle that we really want to be speaking about. That is the battle that we really want to be focusing in on. Amen. Because that's where the power is. That's where the purpose is. It's in the spiritual realm. Because again, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is in that in-between space, right? Because we're not quite there yet. By the time we go to heaven, we won't be here any longer. So we're not quite going to heaven just yet, but we don't wanna stay right here on earth because we, want, we don't wanna be of the things of this earth. We wanna be above it. We wanna focus on the things above and not beneath, right? We wanna be in it and not of it, correct? So we have to focus on what's in between heaven and earth which is the spiritual atmosphere that's always at work. And there is a battle at play. And so I want to talk about those things. And I want to talk about getting ready for battle. And you see, sometimes the battle comes to you. And sometimes you go into the battle. And so I want to talk about those differences, right? 
and that either way we must be prepared for it. Whether you're the kind of person or life makes you the kind of person because that happens too, where life just molds and creates an environment in a situation where you have no choice but to just go into the battle. And there are other times where you're just in the back, you know, the quiet person in the back, just minding your business, you know, I'm, I'm doing real well over here, minding my business. And the battle just comes to me. It just comes at me, right? And so I want to make sure that God is preparing us for either side of the fence, either side of the battle. And it's so imperative and important that we don't continue to wait for when the battle comes to us or for when we're forced to go into the battle. But to be so clear to hear his voice when he says, move, it's time to go into battle. Or when we hear his voice saying, he's sounding the alarm that battle's coming, right? One of my favorite Disney movies is Mulan. And do you remember, I prefer the animated version, just, you know, being biased over here. I'm a cartoon kid. And so if you remember at the beginning of the movie, you know, they're all standing there guard. And there is a, I think a noise, a horn or a trumpet or something that sounds off that says, hey, the battle's coming. We see the people coming. They're coming at us. The battle's on its way. And God will send some alarms, some things in your spirit that will say, hey, battle's coming. Time to get ready. Time to be prepared. Don't wait till the battle is at your doorstep in order then to start getting ready. I know you all heard the worldly saying, you know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? <laughs> and there's something so important about that in the kingdom of God. We got to stay ready because if by the time the battle hits your doorstep, you trying to get ready, you might lose that battle. Because there might just not be enough time. Now, granted, victory is yours regardless. I want to make sure I speak that over your lives this evening. Do you know that regardless of the battles that you've lost, that God still says victory is yours? The banner of victory is over all of us. And I'll tell you why. Because even in the battles that we lose, there are lessons to be learned. But see, the Lord wants us to get to winning battles quicker. Amen. Hmm. Ooh, so good. So part of not waiting and part of being clear to hear his voice is part of being not on the defense, but on the offense. And I know you've heard that before from both Prophet Nick and Minister Quentin, for those of us who have been in this community for a little while, we've talked about that, about the importance of not being on the defense. But those who are good, offensive, strategic players are able to win the game, to win the battle. You ever notice that even athletes, when they're getting ready to go to a game, they're watching a whole bunch of film and tape before they go into the game, before they go into that battle? They're, they're getting prepared, they're getting ready. See, they're learning what the competition has been doing. They're getting all this information and intel because being offensively ready makes you a lot stronger than just waiting to defend and counter what's being thrown at you. And so when the Bible talks about building your house on a solid foundation versus building your house on sand. That's how I feel about kingdom strategy. You want to build your strategy on something solid, on something that has an offensive strategy, as opposed to building your house on sand, things that can just, you know, sift through your fingers. You don't want to just hold on to this thing so loosely. Oh, I got it. It's all good. I cross that bridge when I get there. That's a very loose way of holding your promise, of holding your power, of holding your purpose. Now we all know what happens when you hold on too tight, you crush it. 
So it's really important for you to have a grasp on the things that the Lord has put on your hands, right? And hold it in such a way that it, it's not like sand, it's not slipping through, but it's solid foundation that you can hold on steady. Hmm. So I wanna give an example of going into battle. And one of the places that I went to in the Bible is Joshua and Caleb in Numbers. You know, they were specifically sent to be spies. And if you know this part of the story in the Bible, you know, the people Moses had freed the people from Egypt. They had been going around in the wilderness. They're getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. And Israel is just, just over there, just in a place where they can see. But you know, sometimes the promised land is really scary. And there is a battle between where you are and where the promise is. And so a lot of times you'll send out some spies, some intel in between your promise and that battle. And you'll say, hey, go check it out for me real quick. Let me see what it's looking like over there. Cause I'm not quite sure that we're ready or I need to know the things that I need to have in order to get there. Kind of like when you reach out to people that are already doing the things that you wanna do. You know, if you really wanna get into sculpting, you reach out to a, a well-known sculptor or someone who's been doing it for a while, someone who really knows what they've been doing. If you wanna be a writer, You'll, you'll reach out to some people who've been writing for a while and ask them some things, get some keys from them, right? You don't just always just dive in. Some of us need a little intel. We need a little spy work. So Joshua and Caleb, they went over there and they spied a little bit. So if we go to Numbers 13 and 30, it says, let us go up at once and occupy it for we are well able to overcome it. So if you read in Numbers, one of the famous sayings in Numbers is that they saw a land made of milk and honey, right? There's just, it was this glorious land. And there were all these riches and all these things, but again, the battle to get from point A to point B was quite hefty. And Joshua and Caleb, they had a strategy and they not only did it, part of their strategy was their faith, right? They had such a faith in saying, hey, let's just go up there. And once we go up there, once we get there, we're going to be able to occupy it and we're going to be able to overcome it. Like at this point, we've overcome Egypt. We've overcome the wilderness. Like psh, we've been through some things. So if I've already been through it before, if he did it before, he'll do it again. That's one of my favorite jams, right? Same God right now. Same God back then. Y'all jamming with me or not? Like, what we doing on this Wednesday night? Like, I need y'all to be jamming with me, right? So if he's done it before, he'll do it again. And that's part of the strategy is knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You got to have that in your toolbox of your strategy is knowing that God is consistent. He is the same. And if he is a God that has given you power and purpose and has had a strategy for your life, when the battle comes, why would he leave you now? He's brought you this far. You think he's gonna leave you now? He's brought us this far, 45 presidents in, right? And we, listen, I can go into a whole sermon about that. But we have seen some foul things prior to 45. We, we have seen all types of things in our history and in this land specifically that we call America. But he has been the same God that has kept us since the time of the people leaving Egypt, he has kept us. So if he has kept us through this 
insane year that has been 2020. We, I don't think we could have fathomed or imagined or have been prepared or had the strategy per se, or so we thought, because there's so much that we have already done. There's so much that Joshua and Caleb had already done in their faith and who they were in God that prepared them for the battle that was to get to Israel. So much so that when they saw it and it was bigger than anything they had seen before, they had the confidence to know that they could overcome it. So my question is, when the Lord has given you faith, and we know faith without works is dead. We talked about that last month, putting that faith into action. So you've been putting things into action and prayerfully you've been seeing the Lord move. So if you've seen it, that's part of the strategy. Putting that faith into action and knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that he's going to continue to come through like he has before. And that you will overcome it and occupy it. You will occupy those spaces that he's called you to be in. That's why he's putting your name in rooms that you haven't even stepped foot in yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this evening? God is already fighting for you. He's already pushing back the darkness. So if he's already doing that, is he, if he's already putting your name in these rooms, how could you not have the faith of Joshua and Caleb that you can occupy that space? That you can overcome it? Oh, I just, I can't. I'm going, I'm, I got to keep going because I'm going to be here too long and I'm not trying to be before you long, as my brother Paul would say. A special shout outs to Paul and Jasmine. Happy one year anniversary. There's a whole kingdom strategy to a, to a lasting marriage. I'm going to leave that to our leaders to give that to y'all. Hopefully sometime this month. You know, kingdom strategy to lasting relationships. Ding, just going to throw that out there. I kind of need that one for myself. Uh, <laughs> but I want to I wanna say that in Numbers 14, 24, it says, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he went and his descendants shall possess it. So this is where God is speaking, right? God is saying, look, because you have been faithful, because you're set apart, because your spirit is different, there goes another strategy. See, when he created you, right? when he was molding you before he put you in your mother's womb, part of that strategy is that he made you uniquely in his image. He uniquely made you with a gap, right? He uniquely made you just a little taller than most. He uniquely made you a little shorter than most. There is a reason to why you're different. Part of your difference physically starts to speak to how you'll be different spiritually because what makes you different physically is going to require some things out of your spirit in order you, for you to fight the good fight. You think it was easy growing up with a gap? You think it was easy being called names all my life? You think it was easy to get to a place in my spirit, in my heart posture, to be able to speak boldly for God and be in public spaces and smile bright with my head held high to say, this is God. Just like this, there's nothing to fix. And so there is something incredibly important that the Lord is gonna teach you through what makes you so different. And right there, it says it in the scripture that different spirit and being that different spirit, but then submission, right? Fully following him, fully giving yourself to the Lord will then bring you into the land in which he went and your descendants shall possess it. So it's not just for you, but your descendants as well. I mean, generate, we're talking about generational things. So me overcoming the things that the enemy tried to use to compete and say, look at that person with straight teeth. Look how pretty they look. Look how amazing they are. Look how well-spoken they are. 
the battle, the competition, trying to war against your power and your purpose. Because there's power in this gap and you're going to respect it. And there's purpose in this gap. So therefore, my descendants are going to possess some things because I'm walking different. Because I'm choosing to fully submit myself to the strategy that God chose for me. Are you guys with me? Are you guys hearing what I'm telling you tonight? Do not forsake what makes you different. Fully surrender to it. I wanna define for you the battlefield. In Webster's Dictionary, the battlefield, battleground, however you wanna call it, is a place where a battle is fought. It's an area of conflict. Ooh, that thing hit my spirit. Because where the battle is fought, it's many places. And where the conflict lives, that area of conflict can be many places. See, if y'all were taking notes on Sunday, y'all will remember <laughs> that Pastor Nick let us know that kingdom strategy can be in all of these places. Finances. It can be in your marriage. It can be in the government. It can be in industry. It can be in media. It can be in the church. It can be in your prayer life. There's so many areas where kingdom strategy is. Therefore, there are so many areas where the battlefield is. There's so many areas where the battle is fought. It is fought in your finances. Because if you're going to be a good steward over what the Lord has gave you, you don't think that the competition is trying to battle over your finances. It ain't trying to take everything you got. It ain't trying to come for what he's giving you, what he's put in your hands. You don't think that then there's a reason why maybe finance and money is an area of conflict for you. Maybe you're not good at budgeting. Maybe you can't hold money. It just slips out of your hand like water. You don't even... Kevin Hart got a checking in a savings and you don't got a checking in a savings. So, but there's a strategy to that. There's a reason why there's a conflict in that area for you because it's coming against your power and your purpose and able to be able to be a good steward over those things. And the battlefield, it also can be in your mind and in your heart. Battlefields aren't just locations geographically, which they can be. The battlefield could be in your workplace. There could be stresses and things and people that really come for you at your workplace. I know we can all speak for that. And so that area of conflict, that battlefield, there is strategy to overcome and possess and occupy it. You can occupy your finances and possess it. That thing doesn't have to be over you. You can be over it. And part of being over something and possessing something is also letting it go. See, when we hold on, again, go back to the, what he put in your hand. He put money in your hand. You hold on to that money too tight. You hoard it, you store it, you can't give it away, you can't sow to your church, you can't give money to your friends, only when you feel you got more than enough to give. God can't work from that place. And then when we're too loose with it, right? We're just always spending it and giving it without wisdom, without strategy. We're bankrupt, we're broke. We, we can't seem to grow a harvest because we're sowing seed in bad ground because you're not using the strategy of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven to hear his voice clearly, to be able to do those things in such a way where you overcome it and possess it. Are you guys getting this? Is it food for your soul tonight? Can I get an amen if you feel it in the chat? Talk to me, people. So I want to talk about, I've talked about the places where the battlefield can be. I've talked about the things and the places that the battlefield sometimes lies. And I talked about you going into the battle, right? 
But let's talk about when the battle comes to you. Remember when I'm talking about you back here, just minding your business, sitting back, sipping your lemonade or your iced tea or your Arnold Palmer for those who like both, right? And you're just, just you're doing the things, right? You've been a good steward. You don't have the same kind of problems other people have. You out here sewing and you're praying and you're worshiping, and you're just in this groove, and you and God are doing great. And out of nowhere, the battle just hits your footstep. It just comes like a thief in the night. You don't understand why so much warfare is at your footstep. You're like, Lord, I mean, I've been going to church every Wednesday and Sunday. I've been out here, you know, feeding the homeless, sowing to my church, praying for my friends. I mean, I don't understand. I've been a good, I've been a good, good child, right? That's, that's what you tell yourself and you just don't understand. So then why is like everyone at my job against me? Or why am I losing relationships? Why do I, am I getting fired? Like all these, like, don't, I don't know about you, but isn't it when like the battle comes, it's not just one area, it's not just one thing at a time. It's like, it hits you like, like a 3.5 sucker punch. It's like, pat, 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 pat. it's like, it hits you everywhere. And it's like, you can't even, you can't even block right. Like you don't understand. Like it's just so much coming at you at once. So I want to talk about someone in the Bible where that's exactly what happened. I want to go to Job. See, in Job 1, it says, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. One who feared God and turned away from evil. So, I mean, Job was like God's man's in them. Like, as they say from where I'm from, right? Where I'm from, that's how they talk about people you can count on. People who are loyal to you, people who are like, they're ride or die. That's my man's in them, right? Like, you don't even got to give them a name. You don't got to know who they are. Just know that's my man's in them. <laughs> and that's who Job was to the point that Satan had such a problem with God's man's in them and was like, you know what? Let me test your man's in them. Let me talk to him real quick. Because I bet that if I come into Job's life and I start taking away all these things, I bring the battle to his doorstep, then he's going to forsake you. He's not going to be trying to mess with you. I bet he ain't going to be calling you his mans and them then. When, he when you kill all his children, when he loses his stock, when he loses all his sheep, when all this stuff starts happening, I bet you he's not going to be for you. And so, my beautiful people, these stories are for us to glean on and really look at and see that when, you, just because we somehow magically think that like if we're faithful and we're good, yes, God will seize us. He sees what we do, what we do in the quiet place. And we will be blessed for it and we will reap a harvest, but we have to know that we're at war. And part of the strategy of the other team in the competition is that they want to come for that power and promise. I can't say it enough. So we can't just sit here on the defense and play with little victims and feel like, but I've been doing so good. Why are all these bad things happening to me? Job, and, and if you read the book of Job, you'll start seeing it gets to that place for Job. Like Job starts getting into a deep depression, Job starts questioning his entire life. Like, he's like, I don't know why I'm even alive. What's the point? Like, what is my life for and what is it about? And it can, it can get like that. The battle can come to you so crazy that you can start feeling like, man, what is this all for? What does it even mean? What's the point? And that's exactly what the competition wants you to think. That's exactly what the competition wants you to do, to just be done, to quit fighting. That's part of its strategy. But see, God has a strategy to keep you in the fight, whether the fight you're going into or it's coming to you. 
Y'all ready for this one? All right, y'all. Let's go to Ephesians 6. I'm going to read 10 to, through 20. So just bear with me because it's just all too good for me not to talk about all the nuggets and strategies that are in here for when the battle comes. So in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, which I'm in the ESV because that's where I thrive, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord. Finally, because you know, sometimes we're in the Lord. <laughs> we're at church, we're up in there, but we're all up in the kingdom of God, weak, just weak. That's, I mean, I'm not gonna belabor that point, but y'all know what I'm saying. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So the strength don't come from you. It comes from his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of evil. The schemes of the devil, excuse me. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Mm, that's so good. I'm going to come back. I promise. I'm just going to have to just get through it. Read it, Sally. <laughs> mm, thank you, God. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. There's so much there. I think I could be here a whole other hour, which I'm not going to do, but I'm just going to get the keys, right? The, the points. Woo. The armor of God it says put on the whole armor of God. It's one of the strategies. And armor, by its basic definition, is defensive covering, right, for the body. Usually when we think of armor, we think like that metal combat, that metal stuff that people use in combat back in the day because you know, they don't really use that now. Um, also, armor is a quality or circumstance that affords protection, the armor of prosperity a protective outer layer. And so if you're putting on the whole armor of God, then you're putting on a defensive covering in the spirit that you're going to be spiritually covered in such a way. Because again, where's the battlefield? The battlefield could be in many places. We talked about it. The battlefield could be in your mind. It could be in your heart. The battlefield could be in your marriage. The battlefield can be in your workplace. The battlefield could be in your church. But regardless of where the battlefield is, there is an armor that only God can provide that you must put on. Because your prosperity comes with that armor. Because without it, then we shall fall and we shall not prosper. And what are his plans for us? Plans to prosper. And so then it goes on to say, fasten on the belt of truth. 
Now we know a belt, you know, hmm. I can't, I can't, listen, I keep thinking about my hood days, you know, growing up in the Bronx <laughs> and constantly hearing the old mothers telling these kids to pick up their pants, to put on a belt because their pants are sagging and falling off. There are things that are dragging and sagging in your life. There are things that continue to just fall off that shouldn't be falling off. But there is a belt, a belt of truth that God wants you to fasten around your life so those things can stay upright, so those things won't sag and fall no longer. See, and that's like belt for clothing, but then there's like a, another belt, like, you know, the belt in the car. And that's a continuous band of material, right? In machinery, according, I'm just, you know, I'm in definition. I mean, hello, I'm not, I'm smart, but I ain't that smart. Uh, machinery for transferring motion from one wheel to another, right? And so that belt, that motion, it's continuous. So when you put on the belt of truth, when you put on that thing that God gave you. And where is where does truth lie? Do you know that? The truth is in his word. So when you fasten yourself with that belt of truth, let me tell you something, that's continuous. That machine, you're gonna have a well-oiled machine. It's gonna run, it's gonna run real good because it's continuous. God, listen again, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's continuous. That's infinity. He's all knowing, on all seeing. He's, he's infinite. So therefore, that belt of truth, I mean, that, that's, that's an infinite circle. If you just stay in that pocket with him. Are y'all hearing me? Ooh. All right, what else? What else does it say? Ooh. Wait, I have a, another little nugget in my notes from strategy. So although here it says, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth, which is Ephesians 6, 14. In the Greek, it says, having girded your loins. So girded is another word for fastened, right? But loins, the Hebrew people believed that that's where your power resided, your generative power, which is why there's so much, there's just so much um, conversation around the power of a womb, right? And sermons that have been taught and spoken on, on what you're birthing through the womb. And the reason for that is because there's generative power there right here. You know, they always say that God is your gut when you get that gut feeling because there's generated power down there. And so the same way that there's generative power, there can also be generative trauma, which as we all know is passed down. And that's also part of the strategy of the competition to keep a continuous belt. See, there's a side for each of these. And so while on this hand, if you keep your eye focused on the armor of God and the belt of truth, you can have a continuous belt of generative power and purpose. Because again, the kingdom of God is where the power is, is where the purpose is. But if we keep our eye on the generative trauma and curses that have been passed down, then that'll just be continuous. Then we'll continue to pass that down and our descendants will occupy and possess that instead of this, which is power. Amen. Hmm. And then we go on to talk about having Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Ooh, that's good. Now, a breastplate is a part of the armor. So, right, the breastplate is this part right here. And the breastplate is also a form of protection. We know that. 
but the breastplate is extra special because it protects the most important parts of the body, right? So right here underneath the breastplate is your heart, it's your lungs, it's, um, and some other necessary organs, right? I, I don't always know all the organs that are under here, but most importantly, your heart and your lungs. And so the breastplate is covering those most important places. That's in the, in the physical, right? But in the, nat in, the, in the spiritual realm, when it says, put on the breastplate of righteousness, what I hear the Lord saying through that is that righteousness is the strategy. Righteousness is what's necessary to save your life because righteousness, that breastplate of righteousness is covering up the most important parts of your life and the most important parts of your body, your heart, your lungs, your breath, your soul. You need that righteousness to be able to walk in the kingdom of God with that power and to be able to stay aligned in your purpose. Righteousness is the most important key and strategy to this whole thing. And again, I said that I wouldn't be before you long. So there's so much more to get into, right? The shield of faith, extinguishing the flaming darts, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. I mean, there's so many nuggets in here. I can go on and on and on. But the most important kingdom strategy that I wanna get into tonight is righteousness. Because that thing is the breastplate that's gonna protect some of the most important things you hold dear. And it's gonna help you hold on to that belt of truth that's going to keep you fastened on tight to uphold those things that are trying to sag or fall away. It's going to keep your generative power protected. You will no longer pass down generational curses. They will stop with you. That is what righteousness does for you. And it's okay that righteousness is a process. And it's all right if some days you may not get it all the way right and you may miss the mark. You may have missed the mark today. While being in the battlefield, while being in your marriage, while talking about this government and this election, while being in your workplace, being in those areas of conflict can be even so more difficult to be righteous. But it is imperative for your life. It is important to stand boldly. It says, open your mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. So you're sent into those places, those areas of conflict, those battlefields where the battle is fought. You're sent in there to be the breastplate of righteousness, to be the shift, to be the light in dark spaces. That's what and who you're called to be in the battlefield. That's where it's most important for you to put on that armor of God, that belt of truth, that breastplate of righteousness. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. I'm just checking in with God if there's anything else he needs and wants me to say to you all tonight. Hmm. Know that the battle has already won and it's already won because you're not in it alone. God is with you every step of the way in that battle. And also remember that no war is won without the incredible army. And you have an army full of soldiers to your left and your right, which is your fellow brothers and sis sisters in this kingdom of God and in this kingdom of heaven that have been specifically and strategically called into your life to be up next to you 
for iron to sharpen iron, for when your sword starts getting dull from all the battles that you fought, you can go to your brother or your sister to your left and your right and they'll help sharpen your sword. They'll fix your breastplate. They're, you know, if your helmet of salvation gets a little crooked, they're gonna fix it for you. That is the power of community. But if you think that you can go into these battles like the lone soldier and that you're going to win every time. You may win a few on your own, having the word of God in you, being bold in your truth, being on fire. But after a few battles, you might get weary. That's the importance of community, the importance of a good church home. So then it will send someone and someone's people community to come help lift the load. So know that you have that here. I pray that whatever battle you're facing, whatever battle is warring right now, whether it's in your heart, your mind, or in any of the areas in your life that the competition is coming against you, I pray that you lean on this community. I pray that you have boldness in your mouth to speak about these battles. So then you can lean on your brothers and sisters to give you strategy, to speak life into you, to help sharpen your sword so you can keep fighting the good fight. Because your life has too much power and too much promise for you to give up the battle now. So keep fighting, keep warring, and keep winning. Amen.